All right, guys, welcome to episode number 215 of the Digital Barbell Podcast. Take 215 Take 200. also. <laughs> we appreciate you guys being here. If this is your first time listening to our podcast or watching it on YouTube, welcome to the team. Be sure to subscribe while you're here. You're probably here to listen to our awesome guests, Chris and Aaron. But before we get into the interview with them, I got to announce our sponsor okay. of the week. Last week, we had Toyota on the team. This week, we have Campco Camping oh. Products. They make everything that you could need for a pleasurable camping experience, from the grills you need, to the chair you need to sit in, to the sponge you need to wash your dishes with, to the hose <laughs> really? that you have to hook up to the part that nobody wants to think mm-hmm. about when we talk about camping. Yes, our guest today, we found them through their own YouTube when we got our camper. We were diving down the rabbit hole of like all the camp camping bloggers. Oh yeah. And we found them and they're also, we just started watching them because of their great YouTube channel, but then it turns out they're also nutrition and training coaches. <sighs> mine blown. So mine was blown. There. Worlds are colliding. So it's a great interview. Um, just, you know, stay, stay tuned to listen to yeah. this, uh, but I do have to tell a story that I think they'll also appreciate. Speaking Uh-oh. of Camp Co, our sponsor, um, the last time we went camping, we went to a KOA and we with my brother and his family, they have a big, like 40 foot trailer. We have mm-hmm. like, what's ours? Like 18, something like that, 18 foot trailer. So we're all often like the little guy, which is, we have a little guy, Max, but it's a little guy in the big sea of trailers. So we don't often get to connect our hoses where, because those you usually know, line up, right? It is usually run up, right? Cause we have to park in a weird spot in these camper places. So it occurred to me, like, I'm like, I can't believe like everybody gets their own sewer hose. Like what if somebody spilt like that? And just like, I had this thought, I was like, this could be a giant mess. Could never happen. Could never happen. And so we were um, having to like bathe our nieces and nephews in our shower and all this stuff. Cause my brother's camper didn't have water at the time. So we needed to to flush out our tanks. So Jonathan backs up the camper and he connects the hoses and we've, you know, we've had a camper for about a year now. We've become experts at this, or at least he <laughs> has. And his sister was actually with us and she was like, Oh my gosh, I love this camping lifestyle. I can see me doing this one day. Show me how to empty the black tank. And so she's <laughs> over there watching and I don't know what happened, but he can probably tell that side of the story. Nobody, it did, it nobody probably really wants to know the details. It didn't of what go happened. well, and things ended up exactly what I thought, like all over the the campsite. Not all over. We're talking very <laughs> minimal spillage. I was able to catch it I mean, before it became a we situation. We smelled it. We all smelled it before well, yeah, <laughs> we actually true. knew what happened. It it like stunk up the whole campsite. So <laughs> luckily, my sister room. in law had some bleach. We bleached off the the campsite and we went, you know, toured around for that day to let the smell dissipate. But it was now I have a mental checklist. (laughs) I know to go through the order of operations to make sure it doesn't happen. It was like, I had like thought about it. Like what happens if someone spills their black tank contents right here? And now I know what happens. Yeah. You jinxed me is really (laughs) what it comes down to, but all right. So that's that embarrassing story. We need some better hoses, Camp. Out of the way. <laughs> yeah, send us some. We need some hose extensions. And we need an employee, an employee to like watch us do it to make sure we do it right. But yeah, you guys are going to love today's interview with Chris and Aaron. They're the owners of Irene Iron Fitness. They have their own YouTube channel with 42,000 subscribers. The YouTube is Irene Iron Travels. Right. And they own Healthy RV Living, a secondary mm-hmm. account that they're just building awareness through how to help people who are doing what they're doing, living in their campers, establish healthy habits, live a healthy lifestyle, the kind of training that they can do even when they're traveling. But you, but you don't even have to be living in an RV to take this stuff and use it. Yeah. You should yeah. definitely uh, stick around to the end of the episode so you can learn more about them, where to follow yeah. their channel and how to follow them on social media. So yeah, definitely uh, stick around to the end. So yeah. Without any further ado, let's get into today's interview with Chris and Aaron Willers. Okay, Chris and Aaron Willers are full-time RVers, YouTubers, and the owners of Iron Irene Fitness and Healthy RV Living, and we're lucky enough to have them both on the podcast today. Thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you. It's Irene Iron Fitness. I'm sorry. It often gets transposed to like... (laughs) No problem. <laughs> and actually, I had it written down correctly, but I say it wrong all the time in my regular life. So that's why I just read it wrong. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Well, you're you're used to saying iron. Yeah, I say yeah. that a lot. Right. Well, um, yeah, you say that all the time. <laughs> I think Blakely and I found you because back in 2021, we were starting to get interested in camping and my dad planted the seed in our mind of buying a camper yeah. and of course did what everybody does, get on YouTube and start <laughs> researching things. And I think that's how we found you was through a YouTube video, yeah. not knowing you had anything to do with fitness I know. at the time. You guys had some great 
um, educational content on there, especially for new people like us that don't know anything about <laughs> camping, don't know the difference between gray water, black water, and the other water. <laughs> yeah, so that's there's how, some learning curves there. Yeah. Yeah. And we've made a lot of mistakes along the way, that's for sure. But um, tell us a little bit how you guys got into full-time RVing and, you know, kind of what gave you the push to do that? Because I think that's an interesting story and it's something a lot of people dream about mm -hmm. doing. Yeah, it certainly is uh, getting more and more popular. It's it's a pretty amazing lifestyle to be able to do this full-time RV living and still work at the same time, travel and all that. Um, but yeah, we did not really do a whole lot of camping or RVing when we were younger. I think we did a little bit uh, like tent camping. You know? standard tent camping on the weekends because that's a cheap thing for the family to do. But yeah, we yeah. didn't have any RVs in our families growing up. Yeah, so our uh, lives just kind of went normal and typical. We were in the Minneapolis area. We had, um, you know, corporate careers for a long time. And, and we basically, you know, after 15, 20 years in the same field of business and just, um, you know, in the, in the grind and in the rat race and the long commutes and the, you know, many, many hours, the long hours at work, yeah. we, we wanted something a little different. And, uh, Chris has always been a big travel bug. She's always mm -hmm. loved to travel. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was more of the, uh, the guy that liked the stuff, you know, the, uh -huh. the big TV, the, um, <laughs> the new car every yeah, four years, new cars, the big house and all that. And, um, mm -hmm. finally she, she got me to a big trip out West and we went to California and saw the ocean. We went to Joshua tree national park. Yeah. Um, we went to, uh, on top of Mount, uh, Juancito, Juancito you know, yeah. at the same time. Yeah. It just, it blew my mind. So wow. I just kept breaking him down and I was forcing him to take <laughs> these trips. And then finally something triggered on that one specific trip where he, his eyes opened and it was a big aha for him. Yeah. But it didn't start out as our being, it started out as, Hey, let's get out of Minnesota. Let's get out of the snow and this cold and let's go out West. Like let's okay. buy some land. Um, we didn't know what we wanted to do. We were saving. We At were... the time we had a really large house. It was 3000 square feet. It was on two acres and it really consumed a lot of our lives mm -hmm. between, you know, working 60, 70 hours a week, each of us, and then maintaining that house. And yeah. we eventually were just getting stressed out. You know, I think everybody can relate to that hamster wheel where you just mm -hmm. keep running and running. Mm -hmm. And as our success grew at our corporate jobs, we just found ourselves getting more burnt out. And at the end of the day, we would look at each other and just ask, what are we doing this for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When was yeah. this? This was in really 2013 is when it started. And then 2014 is when we sold our house and we moved into an apartment in Minneapolis to get closer because I was commuting three hours every single day. And I did that for over 10 <laughs> wow. years. Oh my God. Oh my so goodness. we finally sold the house and I had to kind of twist Aaron's arm on that too. But we sold the house. We got closer to work. Mm -hmm. And then we started apartment hopping. And so this was in the years 2014 through 2017. And wow. once we sold the house, that was like a chain around our ankle that we were freed from. Yeah, our uh -huh. house was about an hour from the Twin Cities. So mm -hmm. Chris worked uh, on the other side of St. Paul and Minneapolis. So she was going through two major metropolitan areas. Oh my areas goodness. On the commute. And we had a, a house like <clears throat> in a small town called Hudson, Wisconsin, right on the border of Wisconsin and Minnesota. Okay. okay. It was, you know, in nature, you know, nice and private, like two acres of land. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and so that's kind of where I grew up mostly. And she grew up in the cities a little bit. So yeah, I was yeah. not interested in going to the cities. But again, she, <laughs> again, she turned me and got yeah. me over to the city. And we we fell in love with that lifestyle of living uh, really close to, I don't know, the, the people, the, the city, energy. the energy. So you could park your car Friday after work and then just walk everywhere and not drive it again until Monday morning. Yeah. Wow. We, yeah. We kind of had a little, um, mini <laughs> midlife crisis where we were trying to like simplify life. We just, mm -hmm. we didn't yeah. know what we wanted and the apartments were smaller. We started doing these, uh, purge parties once a year, <laughs> or actually it was like every few months we were just getting rid of stuff. Yeah. Like, as awesome. soon as we started, sold the house that was the last um piece of debt we had and we were completely debt free and and that was kind of like a big eye opener as well where we had options yeah, yeah. so once we sold the house we started saving money and we were we were hyper focused on saving so that we could change our life but we didn't know what 
we wanted to do. We knew we wanted something different, but we couldn't agree on it. So we would have these purge parties every Friday night. We would have a bottle of wine and do like a finance spreadsheet, see how much <laughs> money we we're saving. And like, we're like, well, what should we do? Should we, you know, open a gym? Should we open a restaurant? Like Aaron had all these crazy ideas. And I was like, no, that sounds horrible. I don't want to do either of those. Um, <laughs> So we talked about doing the tiny house thing out west and just becoming hippies, I guess. And yeah, and and back to the RV part. We're trying to get to this. <laughs> no, this is this is great. <laughs> yeah. So the tiny house thing <clears throat> opened up the rabbit hole on YouTube, where uh, this was around 2017. Van life was a big thing, and um, you know that was kind of like starting to pop up everywhere on Instagram and YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, we saw this documentary also pop up called Expedition Happiness. And this was about a German couple that uh, bought a school bus sight unseen in the States. We saw it. We watched yeah. that. Oh, okay. awesome. So, and that like goes, as soon as we saw them living in this like beautiful school bus that was like redone as this nice, white, beautiful little apartment, we're like, you can live in school bus <laughs> yeah. and like trap. Like what? And is, then... your, is your classic, like we wanted to emulate their life. You know, they're like this fun loving couple and they're out there living their dream yeah so the vans yeah. pop up right away after that and then that's i turned to chris and i said hey do you want to do that do you want to move into a van and travel oh my <laughs> goodness yes. i'm sure she and... really fought you on that one <laughs> yeah yeah and actually so that... like as soon as you watch that you started being targeted by all the social media channels and you <laughs> yes. started yeah. seeing these ads pop up for sprinter vans and like people with their feet propped up in this the, like ocean in the background oh, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and we for sure like we didn't even talk about doing any sort of towable or any sort of large rv we right away knew that we wanted to do van life we wanted it to be easy simple we wanted to be nimble we wanted to have that sexiness of just pulling in the van and going wherever we wanted to go mm -hmm. uh -huh. and that's what we got into we wanted easy like yeah in this part of our life we were done with like the stress and and all that we wanted easy so this van basically had every it was an airstream interstate uh so airstream converted it and so it mm -hmm. had every amenity that a big 40 foot motorhome does but it was just smaller right and and that was just our our ticket to freedom wow. to to go so when we made that decision when we had that big aha moment we had just signed an 18 month lease on our most recent apartment and then we were like oh crap what do we do we just locked into this apartment and it really we were so excited it was hard for us to say okay we're going to take these next 18 months now that we know exactly what we want to do, we're going to research the heck out of everything. We're going to save even more. We're going to squeeze blood out of a turnip with our finances. And we're going to just really pound this. And that's what we did. So we had that last 18 months. And then in January of 2019, we were officially, we didn't have any apartment. We didn't have our stuff. It was, we had a little bit of, you know, prized possessions in mm -hmm. a storage facility and we took off in the van and that was it in January of 19. Mm -hmm. Were your jobs remote at that point or did you both leave your careers? No, we, they were not remote. Um, they were both in the office every single day. So Aaron, he was in the auto parts industry. He yeah. started at a single company when he was, was it 16 or 17? Uh, I was 18 or 19. I started as a delivery driver for, for a Napa auto parts. Okay. And basically that was my only job. Um, I just, I stuck with it and, um, advanced pretty quickly through the company. So I was there for 18 years. Wow. Um, you were like the vice that. president by that point. <laughs> <laughs> I was working towards it. Yeah. So he went from like driver to counterman to assistant manager to manager. And then after he exhausted and, and went up in all the manager locations, then you switch to outside sales and yeah. he's really good at that. Yeah. Again, I wanted to, to, this was kind of towards the end and I wanted it to, to be easier management. Um, if you guys have ever, you know, I'm, you know, I obviously, you know, you guys manage your own gym and things like that. It's a lot of work, the managing the people yeah. and you know, managing the, the clients and the customers. Mm -hmm. So outside sales was a yeah. lot a lot easier. I just got to do the schmoozing and yeah, right, and all that. So taking people, calling on customers and taking people out to lunch and that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then what about I, you, Chris? I worked for an advertising company. It was a large national out of home advertising. So like when you see billboards on trucks or billboards at gas stations or inside of urinals, that was the type of advertising <laughs> I was in. Yeah. Have you guys seen the bathroom ads where 
uh like you, you know, you're in a bathroom like, and it's against the wall oh yeah sure yeah so like I in started a little case working. so you can't take yeah. it out <laughs> yeah. yeah and i was a similar story where i started as an intern i started as a receptionist and then eventually when I was at my height, I was a director, a senior director of operations. So I was in the office every day, yeah. all day on the computer, managing people and projects. And both of our careers were on site every single day. So you built Don't up this off. kind of nest egg to live off of. And at what point did like fitness become the, the, the career path as you went off to like do this adventure? Yeah. And, so, and, and why? <laughs> yeah. So Aaron and I, neither one of us was like a really big fitness junkie as a child or even a young adult. I would just say we're like your average active person. And in the year 2013, so right at time, about that time when we sold our house and we were trying to like discover ourselves, that's when I got my first, I bought my very first online dumbbell program. And at the time, I was never into lifting weights. I was always a cardio queen. And I also struggled with body image issues. And so when I started lifting weights, it changed my life. It was like, oh, I had this confidence. I felt strong. It was amazing. And I was hooked on it. And um, eventually then Aaron started to lift with me. I'm seeing a pattern here. She got me in this. <laughs> yeah, we want to know what's next. We know who to ask. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it started with that one little dumbbell program. I had some dumbbells in our apartment and I worked out there. And then after I kind of exhausted that, we started to use our gym apartment because we were always at these uh, gyms with great amenities or apartments that had great amenities. So we would use their gym. And I got to the point where I wanted to take my fitness to the next level. And I looked into personal trainers and of course, by now, you know how frugal we are. And so I said, holy moly, I'm not going to pay a trainer this type of money for the rest of my life. I said, I'd rather invest in myself mm -hmm. and just learn how to do it so that I can program my own training for life. Yeah. And that was, that was why I started learning. And so then I um, signed up for the NASM CPT and I put myself through that and I loved it. And it was really just for me to train us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, cool. that 18 months that we were kind of really planning how we were going to transition from these corporate jobs to our new lifestyle, um, it really made sense to go into the online fitness and nutrition coaching and and Chris was gonna Chris was gonna be the star of that. And then my job was to learn all of the technical skills. The back office. Yeah, building yeah. a website, yeah. um, yeah. you know, running the YouTube, the social media, uh, just all these new production style skills that neither yeah. one of us had. So we we're yeah. kind of learning all together. Yeah, but it was interesting because at the time that I did uh, go through NASM and we went through that stage, I had zero intention of ever quitting yeah. our jobs mm -hmm. and using fitness as my next point in my life. Mm -hmm. So it truly was our passion. It was what Aaron and I did after work and on the weekends, we'd go, you know, for walks and runs and we'd lift weights together. And that was what we liked to do. So like Aaron said, when it was time to say, okay, what are we going to do on the road to make money? It was mm -hmm. a really easy thing because we'd already invested in the education we clearly had the passion for it mm -hmm. and that's yeah. how we wanted to spend every day together was just through fitness and you know promoting healthy lifestyle and helping mm -hmm. people live better yeah and there wasn't a ton of people doing online mm -hmm. at that time it was i mean kind of weird timing as far as like what happened in the next few months after you guys made this step both yeah. with the cost of rvs and of everything going of online based training online. Yeah. 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 It really worked out well because we did, we launched 2019. So we did have a full year on the road of pre COVID mm -hmm. where we could adapt to our new lifestyle, our new way, like working together in an 80 square feet van for the very first time and co-owning a brand new company was really stressful. You know, yeah. that took a yeah. little bit of getting used to neither one of us knew who the boss was we still, <laughs> we still don't have an official boss of the That's company um, and then you put it on top of moving into a van and there's so many stressful parts to being a full-time RVer mm -hmm. that a lot of people don't realize you know it's not as it's not as easy or as fun as it looks all the time there's a lot of stress that comes along with it so yeah we had to juggle a lot with that but it turned out good but I guess what I was getting to there was that then COVID hit one year later and we're lucky that that timing hit that way so that we didn't have to hit COVID along with adjusting to our new 
career and our new living arrangement. Yeah, know? I think around 2019, uh, to, let's say 2018, when we were really like building the website and planning the online fitness and nutrition coaching, um, I think most of that was based via email. Like, it, you know, yeah. your, your coach would, you know, email you a program and you'd communicate maybe through text and maybe yeah. through email. Uh, yes. Um, so I did a lot of research on the apps that are, yeah. that were just kind of coming out there. And we tested a few of those apps and, you know, we found one that we really like, and we, we knew that, you know, an app-based online fitness and nutrition mm -hmm. coaching was, was going to be the, the only way to go. Yeah. 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 And I, think you guys use trainerize, right? True, yeah, true coach. coach. True coach. Okay. So we tested like trainerized true coach, PT distinction. That's what we ended up going with was PT mm -hmm. distinction. Okay. And we really like it. Um, what else on that? I mean, there's, it's almost like you, I mean, you've completely changed your life, like what, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, but then it's like, you had to learn a whole new language on, t on mm -hmm. top of that with, you know, learning all the new technology and like, yeah, you know, like all the stuff with producing videos and producing content. And I know you guys have, you have long form blogs on your page. Like you took on a lot all at once. I don't yeah. think people really realize yeah. that. Yeah. And that was really a blow to the self-esteem. You know, we both were experts in our previous industries mm -hmm. and then to give that up, you know, we give up being an expert. We give up really high paying paychecks and we start at zero. <laughs> yeah. And right. then we start living on savings on top of that. And we're like, oh my gosh, what are yeah. we doing? So yeah. that was really like, we had to keep our head up and say, this is what we're doing. We're going to give ourselves, we had like a three to five year runway on cash saved up so that we could launch this business so that we could succeed and that this wouldn't turn into just a six month stunt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you had to build a whole new source of income that could sustain you long-term. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you know much about our story, but we around the same time, yeah. in late 2019, we had the opportunity to both leave our jobs, Blakely closed the gym that she owned in Houston, me leave my job in construction management. And some friends of ours that live in Boise offered us to go live in a house that they owned there for free for like a year. Mm -hmm. Like, wow. and that would help mm -hmm. us until make... they wanted to move there. Yeah, right. They, they were going to live in that house eventually yeah. and remodel it. Um, so they're like, Hey, we know you guys are trying to pursue this online thing. hundred yeah. percent go live in our house for free. You know, we, we sold the house that we lived in, had the equity, from that and mm -hmm. savings to live off of and kind of did a similar thing to you, but not in the, yeah. you know, we transitioned online. The, half, kind of with the, the timeline was the same because yeah. it was like 2019, we lived in Boise, got to, you know, a little bit of pre COVID and then COVID hits and it's like the right time for online businesses yeah. and, you know, the not were knowing you anybody. Guys, were you guys scared at first when, when COVID hit? I mean, we were. <laughs> yeah, we were giving away, like, I was just like, we were like giving away programs at that time. I'm just like, I just want to like help people who are at, stuck at home and like, you know, don't have anything to do. So we were like emailing um, workouts every day to people and yeah. just like, luckily yeah, we, know. we had a pretty good, I mean, we weren't making enough money to yeah. support us at all. Not even close at that time. Thank God we didn't have to pay rent on top of that. But um, we were, we were building a pretty good base of clients that were giving us referrals. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was becoming obvious that like, you know, we're, we were going to make it. Yeah. And actually the COVID actually was a blessing to the business too, because so many people that, you know, were working out in CrossFit gyms and gyms on yeah. their own following programs, or whatever, had to find some other online option. And that really helped our it business. It was like kind of us. all, we had just moved to a new place. We knew no one and yeah. all we were doing was working on the business like 24 seven. So we were just making yeah. demo videos and all the content. And it was just like a perfect time to, if you look at our, it. <laughs> if you look at our blog, it's like, how come they were writing like a, a super long <laughs> blog article every single month for this like year and a yeah. half block. And then like, it's just, <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I, I remember when the COVID, you know, first changed how people trained. Yeah. And I think at first our biggest threat were the big box people like Nike and planet fitness and Peloton coming out with all their online mm -hmm. access to pivot. And they were doing all this stuff for free, right? Because they also needed to protect what they had and, and that was the scariest part of COVID was how are we going to build and we're trying to get new clients and all mm -hmm. these big box monsters are just putting their stuff out there for free. And that was yeah. really hard to compete with. Yeah. In March of 2020, we saw a handful of clients pause, like, you know, mm -hmm. maybe they lost their job or were scared mm -hmm. themselves. Yeah. Cause it, it is a disposable income bucket. Yeah. for coaching, mm -hmm. And so for it was sure. one of the first things that they let go because 
they had to worry about how are they going to pay their rent and how are they going to buy groceries and yeah. things like that. And then yeah. April was kind of also that same kind of pause and like, you know, a dip, obviously. Yep. And then I swear in May, it just it just exploded like it just mm -hmm. came back mm -hmm. like you know multiple times and yeah. it was it was really amazing once they realized that their job was secure and mm -hmm. then they realized that health does matter yeah and that, that covid was you know hurting those with poor health and yeah. they wanted to protect themselves by building their health up so it, it did take a upturn after that first downhill and our timing yeah. was just about perfect with that so um we had a, a full year of our business and yeah. growing and learning and getting, I mean, if, if COVID would have hit us three months into, you know, <laughs> quitting our job, living in a van, starting yeah. a new business, we probably would have, you know, I don't you know. Dipped we into the savings. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it actually came, uh, we were really prepared for it. We were, you know, we had a year under our belts of living in this van, um, working together, growing the business. Uh, our YouTube channel was taking off at that time. And everything was just looking really, really positive for us. And um, yeah, it took us it took us one year to basically uh, get out of the the red mm -hmm. and start earning money and, and breaking even. Yeah, We're breaking yeah. even in one year and get out of oh, our you know dipping in savings. So, yeah, yeah. Or, you guys are yeah. risk takers. I like. Is it. there a certain type of um, client you guys usually you know look for, or what what type of training do you guys do? Okay, so you... so that's yeah, big question and a good one. <laughs> And at the time of starting our business, we really hadn't identified that yet. But at we take anybody yeah, at that point, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now, so this is our fifth year into it, and we definitely have a demographic. Most of my clients are in the fifty to sixty year old range. However, you know, we do have clients in their thirties, forties, and then we also have some clients in their seventies. Mm -hmm. But the majority is in their fifties and sixties, and it's beginner level people who have never touched a weight in their life or people who have never, or it's been like 20 years uh -huh. since they've worked, right? So it's very a beginner level. I am very muscle centric. And so many people have this concept that cardio is the only way to lose weight and be healthy. Yeah, And that's a stigma that I really, really try to break, especially with women, because, you know, men are a little bit more prone to pick up weights and lift mm -hmm. heavy. So I really encourage people to put on muscle, you know, the most neglected organ, in my opinion, is skeletal muscle, and yeah. our nation is severely under muscled. Mm -hmm. So that's what my approach is, is trying to get people to strength train, number one, at least three times a week. So that's usually how I start people off is strength training three times a week with your basic muscle building, you know, basic, I guess it's bodybuilder physique type movements, mm -hmm. dumbbells. Dumbbells is really my number one equipment, especially since being in an RV, you are very limited. So I try to promote people to have either dumbbells or the loop style resistance bands, because when you are a beginner and you're brand new to weight training, it's really hard to ask people to take and invest hundreds of dollars and hundreds of pounds and mm -hmm. lots of space in their RV for dumbbells. Like yeah. realistically, they're just not going to do that. It's not a priority. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say it. I totally understand that if adjustable dumbbells don't fit into your weight allotment or your budget, start with a good complete set of loop style resistance bands. And we'll start with that. And mm -hmm. you can get great results with that, especially yeah. when you're coming from nothing. Mm -hmm. So I also will start with people with strictly body weight. If they don't have anything, you know, I'm happy to get them started with body weight, but eventually I do really encourage them to get some sort of equipment that gives more resistance than just that, because it's just not enough to get all of your isolated muscles and progress as you guys know. So I try yeah. to get them into something bigger than that. Cool. Do you find that um, most of your clients I'm sure a lot of you get results for people and they refer you to other people. Are most of your clients RVers or is it kind of spread out beyond the walls of the RVs? It's about half and half. Yeah. Okay. Half of them are in RVs. The other half, they either want to be RVers. It's maybe a someday dream for them. They really love the life that we're watching. So they're following along in our journey. Um, a lot of our clients find us through our YouTube channel, even though we really don't talk much about health and fitness at all on Irene Iron Travels. But the beauty of using YouTube as a platform to showcase mm -hmm. us is our viewers watch us for 
a year, sometimes even two years. And it takes that long for them to be like, okay, you know what? We really like Chris and Aaron. They can learn my style. They learn mm -hmm. my personality. And then they automatically like me before mm -hmm. they even sign up with me. And that's yeah. a huge thing because then we start a relationship as a coaching client relationship. And we don't have that transition where they need to determine if they like me or trust me. They've already mm -hmm. tested me out for a year <laughs> right. on watching me. So yeah. I always joke because they know so much about me and I don't know anything about them. And I'm like, oh, it's been a one-sided relationship up till now. <laughs> now I got to turn it around and I'm going to dissect you. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. That was a very interesting twist. So in the first six months before, we didn't do YouTube until six months after uh, we were already growing the business. And um, so we kind of started, I would say maybe on Instagram as our first social platform to kind of mm -hmm. advertise, you know, for free, we were being very frugal, of course. And um, it was a very, very interesting twist because the first clients that that reached out to Chris was usually like, you know, hey, can we do a, you know, a, a consultation, you know, a 30 minute phone call, which usually turned into like 60 minutes. Yeah, we did a lot of hour long consultation. Calls. So yeah. Chris was just on the phone call trying to explain what the business is, how it works, you know, who she is, get the style out. And then it was, you know, 50 50 if they uh, came on as a client or if they, you know, moved on to somebody else. Be better mm -hmm. grads than that. If I could get them on a phone call, <laughs> I, they would sign up. That's true. <laughs> Come on, Aaron. But the give her, give her some credit, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, she, she was in sales. That's yeah. true. That's true. The twist was amazing, though, when uh, she no longer had to have that hour-long phone call, mm -hmm. and they people just signed up because they already knew her. They did, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was just that was fun to see that happen. Yeah, they learned they learned to trust you guys just mm -hmm. by knowing you you know through YouTube. That's really cool. Yeah, and I think also the YouTube just shows that you know we do it. We live this yeah. lifestyle. We're in a unique lifestyle that has a lot of nuances. It's very hard to stay consistent, and if we can do it and practice what we preach, you know that's really important for people to see, and yeah. that creates a lot of trust too because they're like, man, they're out there killing it. Yeah. And so the niche really helped I, I don't want to say we 100 percent planned the this rv fitness niche we really didn't uh -huh. um, it's just that's the lifestyle we wanted to live and of course you know how your life and your work kind of meld overflows together. yeah yeah mm -hmm. so it, it turned out to be an amazing um niche that that really nobody was in because as a general rule rvers are not the healthiest of people <laughs> You know, and, and a lot of them are on vacation or they're mm -hmm. retired and they're, they're there to travel and it's a and constant vacation and, mode. Yeah. yeah. And there's, there's a lot of challenges to it. So it turned mm -hmm. out to be a, an amazing niche that we found ourselves to settle into. Mm -hmm. I'm oh, go ahead. I would say that's a perfect segue for something that we want to talk about is, you know, one of the biggest things clients struggle with is quote, staying on track on vacation. And it might look like from the outside that you guys are on like perma vacation because you're in a, a travel trailer yeah. year round. So like, how do you personally stay disconnected from that on vacation mindset and maintain your healthy routine? And how do you help your clients who are doing something, something similar do that? And a lot of it comes down to mindset, I realize. Yeah. Yeah. So for us personally, we'll start with that. We just, we really enjoy working out for us. It's, it's a non-negotiable. We do it every morning. We don't put it off for the end of the day. The habit know. has been built. You know, yeah. it's there. It's part we of never, life. we never skip two workouts in a row. You know, like if we're, if we ever were in a situation where we do miss a couple of days in a row, we feel horrible. Mm -hmm. We just <laughs> right. do. We get, we, our mental health goes down, our physical energy goes down. And that's a big driver for us because we love how we feel when we stay on track. Mm -hmm. And then nutrition, which, you know, nutrition is the bigger area where people struggle more and for us personally like we just really love eating at home and I think that's the biggest key is you definitely need to cook most of your meals mm -hmm. at home and I find it as a huge advantage that we have our kitchen with us everywhere we go we <laughs> literally have a kitchen on wheels so when our viewers use uh, their kitchen as an obstacle I'm like you need to flip that around you know, people in a house that fly somewhere and rent a car, that's an obstacle. You're in your home, you're mm -hmm. in your home with your kitchen everywhere you go. You basically have a lunchbox on wheels on steroids, right? Yeah. Um, so that's <laughs> how we manage it is just eating and cooking at home. And I'm a big proponent for eating whole foods and, you know, it's 
trying to stay away from processed foods as much as possible. But we definitely have our fun and we definitely love to go out and explore these cities and eat the culture foods and, you know, mm-hmm. try to immerse ourselves in our travels. So we definitely try to schedule those fun times out and we have those experience meals planned and we mm-hmm. look forward to them. And when we do go out to eat, we indulge responsibly. You know, mm-hmm. we don't go out and we don't go on a full day bender of eating everything we can. You know, we go out and we indulge things that we really want and we enjoy every bite. And there's no guilt there mm-hmm. because we do have a really good relationship with food and we're able to do that. Yeah, Blakely great. put a post up on Instagram today. We're, we're recording this on Fat Tuesday and she's from Louisiana and talked oh. about, you know, the indulgence of Fat yeah. Tuesday in Louisiana. It's it's yeah. a big thing and that's that's a part of culture. But as yeah. we look at like that in the perspective of our entire nutrition, we eat almost every single meal at home outside of that kind of stuff, which makes yeah. you know a, a big indulgent thing, not that yeah, big of a deal. That. And that's, mm-hmm. that's the thing that we try to help people, help clients understand as coaches is, Quit fixating on, you know, the one thing that makes you feel like you're off track and ends up just sending you down this all or nothing mentality road and make most of your days normal because most days are normal. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So with, with my clients, most of my clients don't start a program with that mentality of cooking at home. Most RVers eat out a lot, Yeah, a lot, a lot. And if they're not eating out, they're eating convenience foods because because of that obstacle of cooking in your RV, whether the obstacle is your refrigerator is a dorm size fridge, Mm -hmm. whether it's cooking on propane, burns all your propane, makes your RV hot and uncomfortable. There's little counter space for food prep. There's, there are tons of valid obstacles for cooking in an RV. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, a lot of RVers are using packaged food or getting takeout like several times a day. Mm -hmm. So when I'm working with them, my approach to nutrition is a little bit different because of where they're starting from. You know, I'm not a hardcore, you have to follow this meal plan because that mm-hmm. just won't work. So I really promote adding in nutrient dense foods and I don't have any restrictions. I never talk about restrictions. A lot of my clients are people that have struggled with yo-yo dieting for decades. Mm-hmm. And if I just try to throw one more hard diet on them, it's going to be the same failure. So I, I do this little educational every two weeks with a habit, practicing healthy habits and having them track it. And I like to use habit trackers and education so that they add good things in and they get that positive gratification of checking off lists. Yes, I'm doing this. And then they start to layer all these healthy habits. So it's as simple as starting with drinking water, uh, eating slowly, eating mindfully, stopping eating you know, before you're hundred percent full walking, walking, adding protein is one of the first things, you know, people are mostly under eating protein and Mm -hmm. overeating other things. So adding in protein, adding in fibrous vegetables, and then we start looking at looking at carb portions and fat portions and things like that. So over time, we're slowly dialing these dials, Mm -hmm. but they don't have any of the tedious tracking. They don't have any of that mental um, where they're feeling like they're being, what's the word opposite of abundance, but they feel like they're deprived. Yeah, scarc- yeah. Scarcity mindset. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I really push the abundance mindset. You can have anything you want at any time, you know, but let's uh-huh. focus on drinking water. Let's focus on eating your protein. Let's focus on walking and having mm-hmm. all these positive things that make them feel really good. And that's a huge driver to help them break that mindset of Mm -hmm. all or nothing, because Mm -hmm. as soon as they have something that's too hard or that's not able to adhere to, that's as soon as when they drop off. Yeah. So do all your clients do both training and nutrition or is it, you can, some people can just sign up for nutrition or just sign up for training. You nailed it. They can have any option. You can just do fitness only. You can do nutrition only, or you can do combo, which is both. Yeah. And of course the best results are with both, you know, because it, you just can't, it's all about nutrition for changing your body and like losing fat and weight management. That's all about what you're eating. Yeah. And then, you know, the, the working out part, the fitness that's sculpting your body, that's creating longevity in your life. You know, there's so many reasons to do both. And when Mm -hmm. people combine both together and have a coach to guide them on both, that's just so much more effective than choosing one or the other, because it all, it blends together 
and they overlap in so many ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that I had my question was back to the RV, like working out when you're traveling. I'm, I bet you get this question a lot, but we, you know, we bought some adjustable jump dumbbells just to bring with us when we're camping. And depending on the place we're camping, I'm like my comfort level of like busting mm -hmm. the dumbbells out and working out right outside my door, you know, you're buried just, you're six feet from your <laughs> when neighbor. the other camper is right there. Yeah. How do you, how do you guys do that yourselves or? Yeah. Know? So we call that RV intimidation, you know, like on your site. <laughs> Um, you know, we never struggled with that personally getting into it. Like we just had this, I don't give an F attitude when we got into it. And, and we had no choice. We were in that sprinter. That's true. Yeah. Oh yeah. No that's choice. true. Yeah. Zero choice. We brought 75 pound adjustable dumbbells with us on uh -huh. our first year on the road. And we just had to bust them out and work out outside. Where you were. Side. Yeah. In the first year in the van, we also supplemented with a planet fitness membership. Mm -hmm. So that was nice. Anytime we were in a city, we would park the van we would go work out. We'd work out for like an hour and a half and then we'd shower. Yeah. Our van would be parked at Planet Fitness for like three hours. <laughs> You're like, I got space in here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's that was a little, a little freedom. Yeah. yeah. For an hour you wouldn't fill two. up your tanks if you showered there. That's a good point. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so we would use our adjustable dumbbells and we would use the gym. Mm hmm. But I think the biggest, uh, back to your question, the biggest tip that Chris usually gives to her clients talking about the uh, RV workout intimidation is basically turning around and facing your Face RV. your RV. I do have a list of tips. Number one is do not face <laughs> your neighbors. Do not face the street. You need to look at your RV and don't make eye contact with anyone. <laughs> and wear a hat. Wear Lower your, <laughs> lower your hat you automatically become Video. invincible with a hat yeah. on yeah. and you can jump yeah. higher and you can lift heavier <laughs> nice uh, put, in, put in some earbuds is another tip just mm -hmm. to like focus on yourself right yeah always go outside with a plan have your workout written down and follow a program because if you just go out there with nothing listed out to do you're probably going to quit early mm -hmm. um, and then the last tip is people aren't ever judging you. Yeah. If anything, you're inspiring them. You know, like if you're out there, you might feel like you're on display or like you're in a fishbowl, but it's always the opposite where people look at you and you inspire them to go home and work out. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. That's a great way to think about yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. So um, the YouTube, let's talk more about the YouTube, just kind of whole experience. Like you said, you waited six months after you were on the road before you even started posting YouTube stuff. Was it all camper related stuff at at that time no no we definitely started out um with it with a, a focus on the business so mm -hmm. so we watched a lot of rv youtube and van lifers because we wanted to learn how to do it and we watched those channels for 18 months and and you really learn a lot because mm -hmm. people on youtube they put their lives out there and you get to watch them just sit in a van and make food or you know go to the bathroom or shower <laughs> or whatever like you you How learn you surviving yeah yeah <laughs> People want to know those questions and those things. Um, so I was kind of intimidated at first to to put myself out there on YouTube. So I decided to be a good husband and throw Chris <laughs> in front of the camera. <laughs> and we basically started out with cooking in a small van. That was going to be our little niche that, you know, Chris was going to do recipes, which we were putting on our blog and our website at the time. Yeah. And she was going to show people that she can cook nutritious one skillet whole food meals mm -hmm. in a sprinter van and, this and was, so can you this was my dream because i've always wanted my own food network show and i thought i said this is my only chance to ever be a food <laughs> network superstar yeah so we so we ended up doing uh those at first and then maybe like the fourth or fifth episode we kind of decided to record some of our adventures we were on the east coast at the time so we were taking this sprinter van into new york city sleeping on the streets going into oh, wow. boston and yeah, I mean, we were having just the time of our life with yeah. this. And so we decided to film those as well. And immediately it was very apparent that the 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 van life stuff was just, you know, a hundred times, a thousand times uh -huh. more popular <laughs> than the nutrition yeah. and the food. Yeah. But I said, we said together, you know, let's dedicate a year. I'm going to do, we're going to do two videos a week. So on Wednesdays we did, a, a usually it was a cooking or cooking. A, a cooking or a fitness video. And then on Sunday, we did an RV lifestyle or a van life mm -hmm. video. And we did that for a full year. I think wow. we have 50 cooking videos in a yeah, van. It's 50 cooking. They're still up live now. You know, it's it's hard for me to watch those now because they were four <laughs> years ago. And 
Um, but they are, most of them are using a 10 inch skillet over a single propane flame. And most of them are protein centric where it's just protein. And then you add your own carbs or fats to it. Um, mm -hmm. but that was, that was like my forte was how do we get people to eat more protein because everybody's sick of chicken. Right. So, <laughs> so that was my go-to on how do I create flavorful protein dishes for people and say like, all you need is a 10 inch skillet. This is it. Mm -hmm. So fast forward three and a half years later, and we have, you know, 42,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel and uh, over 7 million views. And we're now wow. getting like two to 3 million views a year. So we're going to hit, you know, the 10 million view mark uh, very, very soon. And we basically decided to split. And so instead of doing two episodes on one, we, we split. So we have two YouTube channels now. Mm -hmm. And the one is Irene Iron Travels, which is all about... Uh, RV life. And uh, of course, you know, there is some food and fitness and nutrition in there because that's our lives. Yeah. That's our yeah. Life. yeah. And we share it, but then we, we branched off and we niched down even harder and, and uh, started a new website and YouTube channel called healthy RV living, which, you know, obviously the name says what it is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's what we wanted because, you know, Irene iron, it used to be called Irene iron fitness. And so we had, um, <laughs> we had our viewers going, why is your YouTube channel called Irene Iron Fit? <laughs> yeah, because eventually the fitness dwindled down and the lifestyle ramped and took over. Yeah, uh -huh. I was just using it as SEO and getting the name out mm -hmm. on Google and the internet. So when people Googled Irene Iron Fitness, you know, our YouTube channel, we're getting, you know, thousands of views. And so that brought people to our website. And again, like we mentioned before, people... Uh, would then, you know, find our website. We didn't even advertise on our YouTube channel. We weren't really, even during the cooking episodes, you weren't even pushing your business. No, I never did. Because it didn't mm -hmm. feel right. You know, we yeah. didn't know how to do that. Like it was just, we we're just basically trying to share. We're sharing our lifestyle. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it, and we're in the same situation now where um, the Healthy RV Living is definitely a slow growing channel. And when we, it's hard to manage because we have our full-time coaching. We have our full-time Irene Iron Travels. We have two little puppies now. Like there's only so much time in a day. Yeah. And so this Healthy RV Living channel is basically our passion project where we're trying to grow that as much as we can while still keeping our big ships alive. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and we're, and we're training for an ultra marathon. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Congrats. That's really cool. When is that? Uh, uh, April. April. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Soon. 31 miles in, uh, in Zion. So it's oh, uh, fantastic. So if you guys want to leave Texas, you can come <laughs> up with, with uh, take your camper out of winterization and drive yeah. up. Uh, Have you guys we'll be... heard of vacation races before? No. Never heard mm -hmm. of them? So that's a really interesting, uh, website niche. I don't know how it started, but basically people take these vacations to these usually national parks, like, uh, Zion or um, Joshua Tree, um, all, all over, and they run these um, ultra marathons, like up to a hundred huh. miles. Mm -hmm. They they do like a five k up to a hundred miles, and um, yeah. So we heard about it, and we just you know thought that would be something fun to do. And we have some friends, some good friends that are ultra ultra marathon. Uh -huh. Yeah, that got us into it. You know, they influence. Yeah. They're horrible influence. On us. I was gonna say, we have a couple of those people in our life and we try to keep them at arm's length. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the longest I've ever run is like five miles at <laughs> once. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is tough to balance the running and yeah. the lifting for sure. It's, and it's, that's a challenge. And it's actually like controversial in my mind because, you know, I'm, pr I'm pro strength training and I mm -hmm. always prioritize strength training over cardio especially with new clients that are trying to start strength training. Uh -huh. And, you know, for us, we're not, we're not doing this ultra marathon to get in shape or to, you know, change our physique at all, yeah. Yeah. because that's not what it's for. The reason why we're doing this is because in our travels, it just makes so much sense for us to go explore these beautiful areas by hitting the trails. Yeah. And then you add in the month, the mental aspect mm -hmm. of the endurance and really for us, it's just a mental the challenge challenge, mm -hmm. yeah. and the commitment, mm -hmm. you know, and to say, I'm going to sign up for this horrible event <laughs> and I'm going to put my body through punishment. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then once you're out there on the trails, like, you know, the runner's high is a real thing. And mm -hmm. to finish a, to finish a big 20 mile hike and to get back and ugh, have a beer and eat some tacos, like nothing oh, yeah. feels. Like yeah. That. 
But yeah, yeah. and, and I, I do struggle because it gives, I don't want to give the illusion that we're doing these long runs for health because mm-hmm. no, strength train one, first and always. So yeah. I always try to remind people that I'm at a different point in my fitness than you are. You know, I'm at a point where I'm doing this for my mental challenge. Yeah. But yeah. I still need to prioritize strength training. So when we're doing our marathon training, you know, we hit our minimums of three days a week strength training in the RV. And that's really, as your runs get longer and longer, it's really hard for your body to recover with all of that, especially nobody's getting any younger here. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually a really good opportunity for like, there's so much misconception. Like you started out by saying around cardio is the way to get in shape. It's really the only thing, like it's a chance for people to see you doing cardio, but then also see you doing the lifting and then see the shape that you're in. And you know, knowing that you can work on both things at the same time yeah. and that you yeah. should. And how much the yeah. strength training helps the yeah. the endurance races. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Strength training is so helpful for runners because, you know, as soon as your legs bail out on you, you uh-huh. know, your arms are pumping you through. Yeah. Your back and your shoulders and your upper body is holding your pack. You know, like it's really important to have, you know, your triceps, your triceps are pushing your poles when you're using your hiking poles. Like you really yeah. do need to have mm-hmm. some muscular strength if you want to kick butt on the trails. Yeah. Yeah. I bet it is a great way to just get out there wherever you guys are and just see, mm-hmm. see the nature around you. It, That's really cool. It is, yeah. yeah. Especially, train. especially cause we're, we're not going to the bar and eating bar food for five hours or like getting drunk every day. Like, you know, not saying that's what our viewers do, but we're not going and eating out as our way to see these cities. Yeah. Right. We're going and we're seeing nature to see our views that's and awesome. it's, it just goes together that way so much better. So yeah, a good example is the Grand Canyon. Like you can literally hike from one side of the Grand Canyon down and <laughs> across to the other side. It's like 25 miles. Wow. And we both did that um last year and it was i mean wow. if you stand at one edge of the grand canyon and look out at it <laughs> it's it looks impossible know. yeah 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 the the farthest farthest thing from your mind is i can walk across that uh-huh. yeah it's like i'm gonna do that right now <laughs> it looks impossible but once you start doing it and, and you just move your body and you hike for for 12 hours you make it across and and you're going up uh, 6,000 feet elevation hiking out of the grand canyon in crazy temperatures and yeah. it's just it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, amazing. That's so that's part of like the things that we like to do. Yeah, that's great. It's that's even great. further because you actually have to like, you know, if you, you're not going across, you're going down it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. yeah. It's like three times and, yeah. yeah. With the Grand Canyon, you know, most mountains you go up and you work hard and then you go down <laughs> yeah. and then you relax. But the Grand Canyon, it's, it's opposite. It's, it's inverted. Inverted. Yeah. inverted so oh, you go yeah. down the easy and then first, once, first. You're, <laughs> yeah, once you're already like 10 miles in, 12 miles in and you're oh, beat, man. you're like, okay, now I need to climb 6,000 feet and get <laughs> yeah, I think it's about a five mile climb out of the Grand Canyon, like straight switchbacks, 6,000 oh, feet. Wow. Straight wow. Up. Uh, wow. Yeah, that sounds it's, amazing. Okay, well, so, so before we wrap up selfishly, I want to um, have you guys coach us a little bit like we're trying to become better about um our youtube presence like we're committed to putting out a video every week mm-hmm. hasn't really happened but that's our commitment we're, we're going to continue to do it but we're still even with all the content that we create and stuff we're still hesitant to know what to show um in our day-to-day life like we get hung up on nobody's going to want to see what we do in a normal day how do we get over that and what kind of stuff like do people really want to see I, I think you nailed it right there. It is exactly the opposite of what we think. We said the exact same thing. Nobody wants to watch us, you know, uh, set up our van or pack mm-hmm. our van yeah. or, or park in a parking lot or nobody wants to see that. And it's actually quite the opposite. Everybody wants to see that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's quite a, weird. A funny story is when we first started, you know, the lifestyle videos and Aaron would work really hard on editing he would put out these videos that he thought were super boring and that nobody would care about. And those were the exact ones that blew up. So yeah. after we, after I recognized that trend, I'd say, Aaron, how's the video that you're going to put out this Sunday? He goes, eh, I don't really like it. It's super boring. And I'd go, yes, that's going to be <laughs> funny. People are going to love it. So if what you think is boring to your life is super uh. interesting to other people and just your day to day little details that's what gives people the information you know it doesn't mm-hmm. need to be a big like impressive outlined blueprint that you reveal all this new like 
info. They just want to see the two of you in your element, in your natural back and forth relationship with each other and showing what you do. Yeah, mm -hmm. it might be kind of interesting to see your guys' day to day, how you run a business, how you guys, you know, I mean, that's what's unique about what you're doing. Um, yeah. I, I think people people are interested in that. So uh, maybe setting um, a realistic goal for you guys, like, hey, we're going to do 20 videos, you know, once a week and stick to it and see what happens yeah. after 20 videos. Um, we def definitely don't recommend doing like a daily video. Those no. are yeah, that'd be, it's gonna burn, burn you out. out. It's so yeah. much. We film we film so much, and then I'm the same. I'm like, I'll I'll edit it and I'll look at it and I'll be like, I'm not putting this. This out. is super boring. <laughs> this is no one's gonna. Oh, watch. start putting those out. <laughs> yeah, start doing that. Yeah, there's What's there's it? really there's really no easy way to it. It's just yeah, it's, you just have it's to like one. yeah, it's jumping into the deep end with YouTube and putting yourself out there. Um, yeah. The repetition and getting comfortable with doing having, it more and more. Having fun on camera, you know, the audience and viewers can view when you're either scripted or nervous. Yeah. So try to just, you know, ad lib as much as possible and be natural. Yeah, we've done stuff like, so we've sat down, we've, you know, got to our campsite. We'll, you know, show a time lapse of us. Well, so we were in a rooftop tent for six months. I don't know if you guys knew that too. Oh, wow. <laughs> like That's over, over the van? Cool. Uh, no, so that we sold the, the van. Oh, and we sold the van, and uh, we were waiting six months for our uh, RV to be built. And so we bought a truck, and we got a rooftop tent, and we decided to full time <laughs> in that for for the summer in Colorado. Yeah. Um, so one of our videos was in uh, I think it was Smokies National Park, and so we showed ourselves setting up the tent. You know, people are interested in, in all that, and yeah. we set the camera down on the table. And we basically cooked and had dinner together. And the camera was like a third person. And we were like talking <laughs> to each other. And people like fell in love with that. They were like, I felt like I was having dinner with you guys. That's and, awesome. And we, yeah, we're just talking about, you know, regular stuff. And we're just sharing our thoughts and our feelings. Um, and so it's it's kind of like a, I don't know, it's like a journal. It's like They a, felt like yeah. it was very intimate and like they were a special guest at our dinner table. Interesting. Yeah. That's cool. It's those types of things that people really want to see. They want to see you two, you know, maybe talk to each other, fight with each other, squabble. Yeah. A little bit. We don't like... we don't fight. What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, you know, next just... time we do, it'll be the first time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's that type of weird stuff that people um they they really love to share. And that's the special thing about YouTube. YouTube is such a special platform yeah. where anybody can become uh I don't want to say YouTube famous or a YouTube star, but anybody can share their passion mm -hmm. with people and you can connect with people in such an amazing way. Uh, there's just almost nothing like it outside of being, yeah. you know, one-on-one -on -one with somebody. Where's the strangest place that you guys have been recognized? Oh, well, <laughs> probably in Colorado, the strangest place. So we can notice our, our popularity is growing because it is happening more and more where it's not just at national parks or campsites it's in like a lot of walmart parking lot costco parking lots the strangest place was when we were parked and we were inside of a marshall's clothing store i was shopping for shorts aaron was, <laughs> he was shopping and a woman basically it? tracked him down <laughs> and she said we found your truck in the parking lot so we walked in and out of every store until we found which store you were in yeah okay and that's so weird I, I'm in the aisle, like, you know, moving the shorts and the pants. And I'm like, oh, this looks good. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden somebody goes, Aaron? <laughs> the other side. Aaron, what size inseam is that? <laughs> uh, Do you need help? Yeah. Are you going to the dressing room now? <laughs> okay, that's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it is getting uh, more and more uh, with the more views we have and the longer we're doing this, we are getting recognized, especially in the RV community. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll go to a campground now and it's almost instantly when we're setting up, we'll, but people are very respectful. The RV community is, is amazing. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things that, that go with it. So it is a little different yeah. with you guys being in a house, you know, I know there's, everybody wants to be private and, um, but uh, have you guys seen Paul Revla, Revla? Mm -mm. Oh, he's a, he, he's a good physique coach. He's like an yeah. expert in bodybuilding and competitions. And we were really big into watching him for a while. You know how, when you watch people, they kind of ebb and flow, but he was one of our big guys that we watched. And I learned a lot from in terms of like bodybuilding and how that all goes down. And mm -hmm. he has a really great YouTube channel and he just sets up a camera selfie style in his garage 
and he just talks on specific subjects for he likes to do like a daily question like from instagram he'll just he'll take that question and, and answer it but mm -hmm. the reason i bring it up too is because he also does some vlog style like daily just like going to the going to his uh home office or gym office and just kind of brings you along with and mm -hmm. you know shows you that type of stuff so um yeah yeah he'll also throw in some like you know some hot um clickbait stuff like <laughs> how to shred 20 pounds, <laughs> you know, like this or that, or like he does right. very like catchy cut thumbnails. Yeah. So he does it. He does a really good mix of everything. Mm -hmm. But what I like about him is he's just, he's a smooth talker. I mean, you two are such great experts on what you're talking about. You can just don't have to have like a super outlined thing or feel pressured. Like just get on there, let the camera roll, be yourself mm -hmm. and have fun with it and put it out. And most important thing is, hit that upload button don't look at it <laughs> yeah i thought you were gonna like give another tip you're like the most important thing is hit upload yeah. hit upload. Uh, that's that's, yeah. that's a good tip that's what we need to do and then because of our internet speed you wait six hours and your video is up yeah. <laughs> yeah that's great well cool yeah that's that's cool i'm i'm uh excited uh I'd, I'd love to see you guys put some of that daily content out we would watch it yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's one of the reasons that we bought a camper was to force ourselves outside of our comfort yeah. zone. And you have to like do interesting things to create interesting yeah. content sometimes <laughs> too. So I think it'll continue to be a big part of it as we get back out. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. Where can people find you guys on the internet? And if they want to work with you, what's the best way to reach out? All right. So we are at ireneironfitness.com is our coaching website. You can email me at ireneironfitness at gmail with any coaching questions. And we are on YouTube at Irene Iron Travels. We also have our healthyrvliving.com website, which is more blogs and um, topics related specifically to RVing and health. And then we're also on Instagram and Facebook at Irene Iron Travels and Healthy RV Living. Awesome. Well, yeah. hopefully when this airs, you'll be at... 42,010 subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we hope to see you on the road somewhere. If you're ever in central Texas, definitely. I know you guys were recently, we weren't able to hook up, but next time that you pass through, hope to meet you guys in person and we'll put you through a workout over here. <laughs> oh, I would love that. We're, well, we're we, coming through. We are going back through. So we would love to see you guys. In May. Cool. cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah for south, sure. South Late Austin. April, early May. Cool. Yeah, for sure. Well, we really appreciate you guys' yeah. time. Keep up the good work and uh, we'll see you on YouTube. Thanks. Thanks Bye. Guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye.